What's up everyone? In today's video, we're gonna be designing a cinematic, sort of collage style t-shirt graphic. We're also gonna be creating some 3D text to go right along with it. All of this will be done inside Photoshop. This is a highly requested video and be sure to stick around until the end because I have a really, really special announcement. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you so much to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. It means so much that you watch these videos, so thank you. In this tutorial, we are going to do a few things. For one, I'm gonna show you how I do like 3D text in Photoshop. This is probably like top three requests that I get. Um, there's lots of different ways to do 3D text. Everyone has their own method. I'm gonna show you mine. Secondly, I'm gonna build out a design using lots of photos in sort of like a collage, um, which is a bit different than I've done in the past. Like I've obviously used photos before, but this is another request that I get all the time, like how to like kind of blend them seamlessly. So I'm gonna show you that. And uh, yeah, there's gonna be a ton of other, I'm sure tips and tricks along the way. So I think without further ado, let's just get into my computer and see what's going on. Okay, so in most of my tutorials, I start off with a finished design and then sort of work backwards and recreate it. That's not what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna start off completely from scratch and just sort of build this out piece by piece. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I have decided to do a Tom Hanks tribute t-shirt. Um, it's gonna feature a bunch of you know stills from Tom Hanks films. Uh, I think he's one of the greatest actors of all time. I get a lot of the requests I get are these like, you know, whatever Scarface collage shirts or like I've seen one with like Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, uh, so I just figured why not do Tom Hanks, you know? All right, so first things first, I'm gonna show you how I do 3D text. Um, like I said, there's lots of different methods. I've experimented a ton and I think this is like the fastest way to do it. So. We're just gonna click with our T for type tool in the middle of the canvas. We're gonna type out Tom Hanks. I'm gonna use the font uh, Aiken, Aiken, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I love this font, I use it all the time. I just think it's like perfect for this style of design. It's super thick, um, you know, for like the gold text we're gonna be creating, it's nice to use something that's got a little more, a little bit more weight to it. So we've got our text typed out. I'm gonna check out the kerning, make sure everything's like kind of spaced appropriately. Um, I always like to do that first before I get into any like heavy editing of the text, like applying effects and all that shit. So I'm just, just editing the kerning a little bit. I'm actually gonna bring the M a little closer to the H. Whoops. Pretty simple, just eyeballing it. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna duplicate it, Command J. So I always have this original text to go back to. Here's the deal with creating like gold 3D text, at least if you, if you use my method. You can experiment a ton and mess around, um, you know, with different uh, gradients, different bevel emboss, all that stuff. Um, I've done my own work before this tutorial to basically create like a liquid gold textile. This is gonna be for free. It's linked below. So if you wanna um, follow this tutorial, just grab this textile and um, you know install it and you can use it for this tutorial on your own stuff. So let's check it out. All right, let's get in here nice and tight. So it's just a nice sort of like gold sort of liquidy soft um, you know layer style definitely you have license to mess around with these different settings do your own thing like I said you can switch up the colors do it do whatever you want but this is meant to have sort of like a gold sort of 3d vibe and I'm gonna be editing the hue and saturation a little bit more um, as we go through this tutorial so we've got our our text right the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this Tom Hanks text again. So Command J, and we're gonna be working with the second layer. Um, this is gonna turn into our 3D um, extrusion sort of layer, right? So let's zoom back in here. 
Uh, all right, so right click on this uh, second layer and go to new 3D extrusion from selected layer. It should be the very bottom option when you right click. And I'm using Adobe Photoshop 2021. So if you're using some other, you know, year uh, version of Photoshop, it might be a little different, but um, here's where things could get really complicated if you want. So there's tons of different things that you can do within 3D text and Photoshop. I'm going to try to keep this as basic as possible. That's my whole goal with this video. Um, but I definitely encourage you to experiment with all these different settings um, and just mess around and see what kind of results you can get. The first thing that I'm going to do is you see this, um, you've got, if you've got the T highlighted right here, um, it's the, yeah, mesh. You can mess with the extrusion depth and that's basically going to change how far back that 3D extrusion, you know, layer goes. Um, I'm going to go to probably like 1200 pixels. See what that looks like. Yeah, pretty like beefy, nice like 3D effect. Um, the only thing I would suggest here um, beyond this, honestly, is if you're using a different font, you might get some weird kind of um, things going on with with um, cast shadows checked. I've used different fonts and you'll get like lines running through the 3D layer, which when you render it looks bad. So sometimes I'll just turn off cast shadows completely. It doesn't change things a whole lot. As you can see, like there's a little change that happened there. Um, but you know, for the most part, I think keeping it off is actually kind of a good idea idea for this for this method at least so I'm just gonna click it off and uh, from here what I typically do when I'm using just text when I'm rendering 3d text is I actually change the canvas size um, to just sort of cover the text area like I, I crop it down and I'll, I'll explain why so if I crop this and I'm just using the you know rectangular marquee tool. If I, let's get it even closer. If I crop this down, um, when I render the, the 3D text, Photoshop is only going to render this area of the canvas. If I hadn't cropped it down, when I click render, which is this little box at the bottom, of the the properties window here um if i if i hadn't cropped it would render the entire canvas and probably take like three times as long because it's trying to render what it thinks is like a bunch of other stuff when in reality it's just this small segment if there's some other way to do this um that i i'm just like not aware of let me know in the comments if you know if there's a way to just render a selected portion of the canvas um, it's not a huge deal to me to just like crop it down, but obviously if there's some other way to do it, let me know. Anyways, from here, I don't touch anything else. I just hit render. All I did was change the extrusion depth. Okay. So now it's going to go ahead and render with the most default basic settings. Um, the reason I'm not really changing anything else for one, like I said, I'm trying to keep this very, very basic as a tutorial. And two, I like to mess with the colors um, using like multiply, overlay, all the different, um, you know, um, blending modes in Photoshop versus like trying to, to use the color within the 3D functionality of Photoshop. Um, basically, yeah, just trying to keep it as simple as possible for you. So I'm gonna step away for a minute, let this render, as you can see, there's like 10 minutes left. Hopefully it won't be that long, but um, yeah, we're going to let this do its thing and I will be back in a minute. Okay, so we are back and the 3D rendering is done. Um, you know, as you can see, it's 
got all the appropriate shadows and highlights for, you know, 3D text. So from here, we'll go over to layers and right click on this um, 3D text layer and we'll just go to rasterize 3D. Okay, now we can change the canvas size back to what we originally started with, which is uh, 25 inches in height and 15 inches wide, 300 DPI resolution. It's always what I use for t-shirt graphics. Um, so now the issue is we've got a 3D layer that's black and white. It doesn't make any sense with this text, right? So what are we gonna do about that? First thing I'm gonna do is right click on this 3D layer and do convert to smart object. Um, and then I'm just gonna do a color overlay on it to match this text, right? So double click the 3D layer, check this color overlay box and um, change the blend mode to probably multiply. And then I'm gonna click this color box and I'm just gonna pick out a color from the actual um, you know, top gold text using the eyedropper tool here. And we just want it to be like, you know, sort of a darker shade of orange. And because we've got, um, we've got multiplied turned on, you know, it's using, it's using the, the black, white and, and gray values from the 3d text. And I think right now it's a little bit dark. So I'm actually going to adjust the brightness and contrast of this 3d layer. I'll probably bump the brightness up a little bit just so you can see more of like the 3d text, you know, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Yeah. And then I'll probably just go a little bit darker now, actually. This is all just up to your eyeball, whatever you think looks good. Maybe even like a shade of red might look better. Now let's keep it within the color palette. Second guessing myself there for a second. All right. So I'm good with that. All right. And so from here, I'm going to hold down shift with this second layer highlighted, click the top layer and do command G and that's going to group them uh, into a folder. And then I'm going to do command J, which will duplicate that group, right? So we've got, you know, all this stuff that we can go back to now. I always love keeping duplicates of everything just in case anything goes, goes left and I need to go back to that old stuff. So top layer, right click, convert to smart object. And so from here, I'll probably tweak the hue and saturation a little bit. I kind of want it to be a little bit more desaturated and I might even change the hue, but let's just check this out. So that was command U to bring up the hue and saturation box. Lower the saturation a little bit. Let's see what happens if we change the hue. Eh. Maybe just a little, like, yeah. There we go, plus four. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna do my favorite thing, which is um, clicking the warp tool at the top. It's sort of like curved with a mesh icon thing. <laughs> and then I'll go to um, arc lower and change the bend to like negative, probably 20, maybe even 30. Let's go 30. All right. And then I'm holding down shift here. I want this to be like, I want it to like take up most of the canvas. Um, and so I'm gonna have to zoom out here. The reason that this box now is so big and we can change this, let's do that first. All right. so. When you 3D render in Photoshop, it creates all this other noise around whatever you're you're rendering. So if you zoom in, you can see there's there's noise in the 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 different mostly like mid tones and like shadow um, uh, shadows. Sorry, um, and so basically there's that means there's a bunch of noise up here too. That's like basically invisible like it's so small 
you can't even really see it when you turn off the background. Um, to combat that, what we could do is just use the rectangular marquee tool and just grab this little bit here and do like command J. Um, the downside of that is now, you know, we don't, it's no, no longer like a smart object basically. So we can't like change the hue and saturation anymore. We still have that if we need to go back to it, but this will at least allow us to, um, you know, just mess with the box here rather than it like taking up the whole canvas and looking insane. So sorry about that. It's really annoying, but you know, sometimes you just gotta do weird workarounds with Photoshop. Um, so yeah, right now I'm just holding down shift and like I was saying, I want to make this like pretty big across the whole canvas to make it sort of like have that cinematic feel, you know what I mean? But there, I mean, you know, I think that looks pretty good and you know, we could continue messing around with hue and saturation if we wanted, do whatever, make it super, you know, super saturated all up to you but this feels pretty good as far as like having you know the 3d vibe all done within photoshop um and so i think from here we can start grabbing some photos bring them in and sort of building out this design so let's go down i've got all the photos selected um i'll show you really quick so one thing that I want to point out, first of all, is whenever I'm searching for photos on Google, I'll always go to settings, advanced search and change the any size to larger than two megapixels, because that will basically like filter out, um, you know, it'll bring all the good shit and, and bring it to the top. Um, and you'll basically just be looking at like really, really huge photos. Um, the second thing you always want to look at is like the actual resolution of the photos. Um, if you're doing anything like this, that's like movie stills, a lot of the times like th the resolution will be good, but like sometimes you can find photos from the movie versus like screen grabs from the film, which probably won't have as good a resolution. So the first thing I want to look for is a main photo to use in the design that's sort of gonna sit in the middle while the background is gonna be filled with different um, different images from from the film. Um, I always want, you always want like there, there to be some sort of hierarchy with your design. So I'm gonna go with this one because it's like perfect. Dude's just like, it's a full body shot. Dude's like looking straight ahead. Um, he's holding his box of chocolates. And uh, I think this is gonna work perfect. So I just right click, copy image as you saw back in the canvas and just command uh, V is gonna paste it in. And I'm gonna size it up a little bit. Okay, not super huge, but so from here, you know, you've got a few options on how you wanna cut this out. Um, I'm probably just gonna go with remove background and then sort of like, um, I'll probably have to like edit it a bit to clean it up. So <clears throat> first I'm going to command J, duplicate it, I'm always duplicating stuff, remove background. That's uh, in this properties window. If it's not showing for any reason, just go up to window properties and you'll see it uh, under quick actions. So, I mean, this did the job for the most part. It's it's clean in some areas, in some not so much. Sorry, Tom, uh, we're gonna have to clean that up as well, clean up the shoes a little bit. So, that's fine. Uh, ooh, is his head missing too? Ooh, we gotta fix that too, all right. So I'll just go down to the original image here and get some of this hair back, command J. Ooh, what the fuck's going on there? It's like missing. That's weird. All right, maybe we'll leave it. All right, I was, all right. Anyways, all right, so top layer. Um, I'm going to convert it to a smart object and then I'm actually just gonna rasterize it right away. Um, 
I don't know why there's not an option where you can just like rasterize it out of the clipping mask. Maybe I'm like missing something, but um, oh, the other thing, make sure when you're done with 3D, you change your workspace back to essentials so you can get everything looking like the default kind of Photoshop. I'm gonna go over to the eraser tool and I'm just, just gonna clean it up, you know, a bit. So we can get Tom looking a little bit, you know, less like sketchy. And as you guys know, when I do these tutorials, um, you know, I go faster than I normally would just to get the point across. You'll definitely want to take your time with all this stuff. Um, you know, I already, I already get comments every once in a while that say too much talking. So I'm trying to like, you know, I guess do less of that. I'm sure there's lots of other areas that I could clean up and make look better, but you know, at least from like, a zoomed out view it looks decent <laughs> so uh god man his head is uh it's gonna bother me all right we're gonna make a layer underneath tom here and just like fill this in with black using literally the um let's see yeah just a hard round brush because that's gonna drive me crazy so i'm just like drawing his hair or his So weird. I don't know why I did that. Let's see what that looks like. Is that better? That's better. I can live with that. And then I'm just going to merge these two layers together. All right, let's change this to main Tom. All right, so we've got our main Tom. All right. Now, from here, we are going to build out this collage. And do I have my show? Yeah, have smart guides on, but it's not like centering to the middle of the canvas. It's weird. Whatever, all right. So now we're gonna build everything else out in the background and sort of turn this into a, like I said, a sort of cinematic collage type deal. So next, I've got a nice photo picked out from Castaway excellent film copy image i'm just going to go to the background layer hit command v and kind of size it up try to get it positioned i always like to get everything positioned so you can see um the whole face of you know if, if you're featuring a main one main person just try to always have their face showing you know what i mean like the point of it it's like a tribute to Tom here, so we want to make sure he's showing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the side of this. Um, and so let's just hide the main Tom for a second so y'all can see what I'm doing. But I'll just go to the eraser tool, go to like, yeah, soft round. We're going to bring it up pretty big. Let's just call it, let's just call it 400. All right. And I'm just going to hold down shift. That's going to allow me to draw a straight line. And I'm just going to erase the side of this. I want some of this text showing, so I'm going to keep that. But I'll show you in a sec what that's going to do with another photo. Let's use Philadelphia. I kind of like the idea of like him looking, you know, towards the center of the canvas in this and um, towards the center in this and kind of looking towards the center. I keep <laughs> I keep trying to think of like another way to say it, but that's all I'm trying to say. I want them both looking towards the center from different directions. That's all I was trying to say, Jesus. Can you tell I haven't done a tutorial in a while? Um, so anyways, we brought this photo in, right? And I'm gonna put it underneath this other one that we just did. And as you can see, since we erased the other photo on the side, it, it blends in seamlessly with this when you move it kind of close. We're gonna size this up a bit because I also want the the um, 
size of Tom's head to be the same in the different photos we use, or at least try to get it pretty close. But you see how that works? So it just kind of blends seamlessly. That's honestly the only trick there is to like <laughs> blending photos together. Like at least that's what has worked for me. So we're gonna get Big Tom back in here so I can see how this is gonna sort of relate. And let me just bring this up a little bit. Up a little, yeah. Okay. And so that's all I'm gonna do there. And now, every time I bring in a new photo, I'm gonna have to erase some aspect of the photo to get it to blend in with what we're building out here. So let's just keep adding photos. Um, Apollo 13, let's get that in there. Copy image, classic photo, where, where can we put that? Maybe right there. Let's see, which side do we want it on? This is kind of like player's choice. Um, let's go on the right side, all right? So with this, I'm going to erase the bottom of this Philadelphia image, whoops. Again, eraser tool. I'm just gonna keep it at 400 pixels, erase. And that's kind of good too, because there's this like weird, looks like part of the table is showing, it looks kind of weird. And so we're gonna just holding down shift, erase that so it's a nice straight line across, see that? And it looks like there was a little missing, all right. So now we've got this new photo here, layer five. Let's just rename these while we're at it. Hollow, Philly, cast away, cash away. All right, so we're gonna move Apollo up. We'll see that will blend in with Philadelphia here. Let's see how this looks. It looks okay. So I don't love the way this transition looks because this is such a sharp contrast between the white um, and the black there. So let's try it on this other side. So we're gonna do the same thing. Just kind of erase a little bit of the, oops, a little bit of the bottom here and bring this Apollo over here. Do we like that more? I think that looks better for sure. And it kind of goes against what I was saying earlier where I wanted the full face showing. Maybe we have to shrink Tom down a bit. I'm just converting him to a smart object so we can kind of, yeah, I think that's gonna be the move. We'll just shrink him down a little bit so we can show more of his face in all the different background photos. Okay, is this text center too? Yep, it is, all right, cool. So it's looking good. We've got the collage going. I like the way that's looking. There's a nice like transition happening over there. And so I think what we need to do is use another photo. Um, that has, has a lot of like black at the top or something. Otherwise, what else could we do? I'm not sure. But let's use this where I was going before. I think maybe if we made this photo really big and we put it across this whole area here, that could work. I don't know if everyone would agree that his, <laughs> his five biggest movies are Castaway, Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Apollo 13, and Big. Probably like Saving Private Ryan would be the move. Um, but we're just gonna throw this in there anyways and see how it looks. <laughs> I didn't really think about that beforehand. Like Big, it's one of my favorite Tom Hanks movies. It's probably not everyone else's, but let's just see how this looks. Gotta get him over there. Um, yeah. Maybe if we got rid of a little bit more of this Philadelphia photo, it might work better. I mean, that kind of works. It definitely like breaks it up in terms of like it being just kind of his, like from the shoulders up in all these photos. I kind of like that this is like a full body, uh, body photo. It's a little bit different, um, but I am going to get rid of, trim this down. Hitting delete there. 
yeah. That's cool. I mean, I like that that right side now. I don't like the left side um, because there's like nothing going on here. And if we erase the Apollo 13 photo on the bottom, let's see. So yeah, we need to add at least one more photo in this in this bottom left side here. Let's see, can we move this down a bit? Okay, so what do we need then? Probably like Tom Hanks saving, there we go. And we still, oh, we gotta go to, I don't know why it doesn't save the advanced settings when you search for something else, it's so weird. Would be easy enough to do. Okay, this would be perfect, bro. Yeah, because we can use this photo, which sort of like goes along with everyone. Like he's looking um, to the right there. And then, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. So let's add this to the very bottom and see how it looks. Oh yeah, bro. I think that's gonna be the move. Let's see. And then just get rid of this like bottom part, right? Maybe. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, damn, the only thing, <laughs> the only thing I don't like now is, and maybe this is like my OCD, but I don't love how it's not like symmetrical in the fact that there's three toms on this side and only two on this side. Uh, all right. All right, let's, uh, can you tell that I'm doing this like from scratch, truly from scratch? Cause I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. All right. So I like, I think I'm gonna make this a little bigger. I do like what's going on here on this side. I would probably, um, Maybe erase a little bit more of this. That's the other cool thing too. Like it doesn't need to be straight across. Um, you can just like delete parts cause you have the full image underneath. So like if you want to delete um, or rather erase a little bit more, you can do that. And that's kind of cool. Cause it kind of show it kind of like, it makes it more artistic versus like mechanical in that like the eraser is just like straight across. You know what I mean? This feels a little bit more organic. All right, so yeah, I like that left side. I don't love the um, the right side. So I think the only way to remedy that is to find another movie still. Oh, dude, A League of Their Own. And I really hope that uh, someone leaves a comment like, you forgot about this movie, you forgot about that movie. I'm like, I'm sure I did, he's done a million amazing movies. Ooh, now there he's looking towards the left. So could that work in the bottom? That might be the move. Let's try it out. All right, so I'm just gonna throw it in here without erasing anything first, just to see how it's gonna kind of live in that area. Yeah, dude. I like that. All right. So I'm gonna again, just kind of trim this. What's cool about having smart guides on is you can see as soon as it, as it hits the side um, where it's flush, that purple line shows up so you can know exactly where to cut it or to trim it. All right, so now I'm gonna actually just erase this image on the top rather than you know erasing something first and blending it in. We're kind of doing the, it backwards now. I'm just trying to get a nice organic thing going there. I don't really want another person in it, so we're gonna erase that. Okay. So now, how are we feeling? I like, I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller here. I wanna get that right around there. 
kind of doing the same thing as I did on his helmet here to, to his hat. That's kind of the goal here. All right, so we have a lot going on here. What I don't love is this middle area. I don't know. You know, I think I can live with that. I don't, you know, I don't love it. Um, could, what happens if we just erase that area? What does that kind of do? Yeah, that looks dumb. Um, all right. We're just gonna leave that the way it is. It's part of this movie still, it's fine. It's still like organic within what we're doing. So from here, we can do a few things. I'm probably just going to group all these like stills together so I can kind of work with them um, all at the same time. And so I will highlight the bottom layer here, hold down shift and go to our top layer um, in, our, in our stills. Let's just rename these saving private Ryan, a league of their own, a league of their own. Yep. A lotto and big. All right. Group these together. All right. So now I'm actually going to duplicate this group and I'm going to merge the top one together right click merge group as you just saw and I think we're gonna have to deal with some of this stuff that's on the side All right so let's get rid of that and that's just from when we were trimming the sides I think that's all we need to do okay bring it back get it centered we are good I'm probably gonna make the top even too all right, so now we basically just have like this nice rectangle of images that we've collaged together, right? So from here, I'm gonna first convert to a smart object. I'm gonna rename it in a sec when my computer is done thinking. Collage, okay? And so first, let's just try like an inner glow to sort of like soften the edges and make it look like it's not just a rectangle like thrown onto a shirt or a design, um, inner glow, we're going to reset to default, we're gonna change the blend mode to normal, change the color to black, and increase the size first. Probably not even gonna mess with the choke, really, I mean, yeah, maybe a tiny bit, but it's mostly just messing with the size. I'm just trying to get it to a place where it's just got a nice sort of, you know, soft feel. Uh, 139, let's change it to 140 for easy math. All right, and there we go. All right, how do we feel about the text at the top? Maybe down a little bit. I don't want this to be like a super tall, you know, design on a shirt. I want it to be like a nice, Sort of just a nice rectangle shape. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I think we should probably put some sort of text at the bottom. All right, so Tom Hanks is a two-time Oscar winner, Academy Award winner. So we are going to put that text on the bottom just to sort of like add a little extra sauce to the design, but also kind of fill this area and honestly kind of cover this this um weird part of the still that i was saying before that i don't i don't really like so i'm going to change the the foreground color to white and then i'm going to write 2x academy award away <laughs> winner all right and I don't want to use the same font we used up top. So I'm going to use, let's use like a script font. Maybe like something kind of like cheesy. What is this? Savoy let. Uh, all right. And now since we're using cursive, I'm going to have to change this. Wasn't really thinking about that. Ooh, why do I keep writing away, bro? That's so weird. 
You guys ever do that where you're just like, I don't know, losing my mind. All right, Academy Award winner. Let's get like an outer glow on this so we can make it blend in and make it readable. But let's increase the spread here. I kind of want it to feel the same way as these. this edge feels. I think that'll make it like feel the most organic. 2X Academy Award winner. Let's make it span the whole bottom here. And this might be nice too, because it sort of creates a different sort of bottom for the design. It creates like a different shape for the bottom versus just like having it kind of squared off, you know? All right, I don't hate that text. I also don't love that text. So let's use, let's see, what do we want to use? I like using a script for sure. Um, and I want to keep it kind of like classy cause it's like, ooh, that's not bad. It's, you know, like the Academy Awards are like theatrical, cinematic. I want to keep it sort of with that vibe. Um, But I don't want to use anything super modern. I want to keep it like kind of cheesy, like 90s, um, you know, look at all this shit. I gotta just delete that, I'm not gonna use those. Um, Ed, man, Edwardian, do I have Edwardian? I don't, damn it. That would've been a good one. Um, how about Snell? No, that could be a vibe. I was thinking either Snell or a font called Apple Chancery. Chancery? Okay, that's all right. Let's try it. <laughs> There we go. I think we have a winner. Okay, so what I like to do from here is apply some different effects to the entire um, design at once, um, basically to make it feel more cohesive. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is group all of my active layers together. And so that basically leaves us with you know, a group with all the stuff we're actually using, all the extra stuff down here in case we ever need to go back. And then I'm going to Command J um, just to duplicate that group. Right click on the top group and convert to Smart Object. Now I'm going to try um, some filters. First thing, go up to Filter and let's go to um, Camera Raw Filter and see what this does. So from here, we can go over to um, some of these presets that they have. It's just the second icon from the bottom here under creative. And we can basically just apply, you know, ooh, turquoise and red. I'm thinking we're gonna end up using that, but let's see what everything. Soft mists, that's kind of cool. Vintage instant, warm contrast. This is where you can really just like mess around and like try, you can even like layer different camera raw filters on top of each other. I think turquoise and red is the move. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty dope. Um, and then I think I'm going to add some levels, some level adjustments rather. So that's just clicking this little half circle, going to levels and that's going to create um, this levels layer here and you can just double click um all right is it already showing where the oh it's right there okay that's why it wasn't popping up but so here's the levels and we can just sort of adjust that and I'm, I'm just going to basically adjust it so it's like just a nice contrast if for no other reason than like printing sake so that like it doesn't have like any like weird gray values like showing here where it could just be like the shirt showing through 
that makes sense. Okay. The only thing I'm not loving about this now being so um, contrasted, 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 who says it like that? Contrasted is you can't see the, the um, 3D text as well, like down here, it's like not really showing, but I think that's actually due to this photo. Um, whatever, it's like too late really to fix that. Um, it's not a huge deal, I guess. I'm trying to think now what I, what I would do to fix that. You know, actually, no, what I would do to fix that is go back to this group where everything is still in layers and move this text down because I, I don't think it's bothering me that I can't see the bottom of this. I think it's bothering me that there's so much space right here. And so it's like drawing more attention to the fact that you can't see that. And it's very obvious that this text says Tom Hanks. So I'm not really worried about like his head covering the text. You know what I mean? Um, if we wanted to combat that, we could like make this taller or something. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, I'm still very much in like editing mode. Just when you think you're done, you gotta spend an extra, you know, 10, 15 minutes on it. I'm also now second guessing this text on the bottom, but I don't think I'm gonna change it just because I don't want this tutorial to be super long again. So we're just gonna get rid of this other one that we are kind of working on. Again, duplicate the group convert to smart object, and then we're gonna reapply the camera raw filter. You see how you gotta think about like, see I thought that the issue was that this wasn't showing the way it is here because this is contrasted against a lighter color photo. Um, if this were lighter, this would be showing. But in reality, the problem was there was just too much space here and it was drawing attention to that. So just all things that I think about when I'm designing, just very minuscule details that honestly the average person might not even notice, but I notice them. <laughs> and so every time I see this design, that's the first thing I'm gonna I'm gonna see. That feels better for sure. Okay, so again, do we need to adjust these levels at all? Maybe a little bit. It's kind of where I left off when I noticed that issue. That's cool. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna end up making this look a little bit blown out um, just to have like that sort of like 90s cheesy vibe. Um, and so one thing we're gonna try right now is basically mimicking what it would look like to have a white underbase um, on your design uh, before it's printed. And the only reason for that is if you were to like try to DTG this design, you wouldn't have that white underbase because that's like not how DTG works, but it is the way old, you know, shirts in the 80s, 90s are printed. So anyways, long story short, this is just gonna make it look like shittier in a good way. So we're going to duplicate, rename this main design, duplicate it, Command J, Control J if you're on PC, and the first thing I'm gonna do is invert it, Command I. Okay, Peter's gonna think about that for a second. And then I'm gonna go to overlay. Okay, and so as you can see, that basically like makes the whole thing look like shitty, sort of like more like bootleg printed. And if it's like too much, you can just like pull back. Um, by changing the opacity. This is a technique that I've been using lately um, on like sort of the bootleg looking stuff. I think it's cool, like I think it works really well. It's just like very quick, but as you can see it just like kind of creates that like, it, it creates like a printed look um, digitally, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, Maybe decrease it a little more, maybe to like 60. And then if you want, 
you can merge these together again. At this point, this would be just to like save space. Um, I would probably like rendering smart filters cheese. Yeah, I'm getting a little too crazy here with the layers and shit, but <laughs> if you wanted, you know, you just merge that group. So now you've just got the one and you could even edit that a bit more. Adjustments, brightness, contrast. Sometimes I'll use levels, sometimes I'll use brightness, contrast. We've already got the levels layer. So I'm just gonna bring brightness and contrast into the picture. Yeah, at this point I'm really just like nitpicking it, you know, like command U, hue and saturation, you can mess around with that. If you wanna make it have a different vibe, you know, more like yellowy sort of skinned, I've seen that that look, you know, work as well. I kind of like that. From here, I would probably just like clean up anything, you know, like right here, this little bit. I don't like how that looks and clean that up. Um, what else? I don't like that little piece. You know, again, just like teeny tiny details. That is key with this stuff. But yeah, I mean, I feel pretty good about that. Let's uh, let's mock this on a t-shirt and see how it looks. All right, so let's use the old master bundle here. And which mock-up kit? Let's use the Comfort Colors mock-up kit. All right, so do we want to put on a crew neck t-shirt? Let's just go with a t-shirt for now. Drag it to the icon and hide this layer. And your design goes here. What is this? Remove. Why is that? It's weird. Okay. And I'm just going to flatten everything and mock it kind of old school like it was for screen printing. And I'm just going to grab this here. Command copy. Your design goes here. Command V and paste it in. Zoom out. I'm going to convert this layer to a smart object so we can size it down. Oh yeah. And change the blend mode to screen. Yeah, bro. That's pretty dope. I'm still not loving the text on the bottom. Truthfully, I would probably mess around a bit more with that um, text and try out some different stuff, but I'm pretty happy with the collage and the, the top gold text that looks pretty like cinematic and like epic that's like what we we're going for so that is it for today's tutorial thank you so much for watching hopefully you learned something so that you can create you know your own cinematic collage style designs with whoever your favorite actor is or musician or movie or whatever you want to do um, obviously there's a million different ways to create 3d text there's tons of different ways to collage photos together i try to find the most like basic fastest way to do it so that you know anyone watching that who isn't super high um, in Photoshop proficiency is able to do it. If you like this video it would definitely mean a lot if you hit the like button. Um, that kind of tells YouTube that hey people are enjoying this dude's videos we should show them to more people and then that way we can just continue to like build this design community. If you have any questions about today's tutorial or anything you want to see in future videos Leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm always happy to hear from all of you. I, I try to get back to everyone as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, just leave that in the comments. And if you have questions like outside of today's video, hit me up on Instagram. It's at fuller.moe. I'm always happy to hear from each and every one of you. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I do have one announcement that I wanted to make. Thursday, May 27th is the one year anniversary of fullermo.com. Um, you know, which is where I have all the different design tools and presets that I've made um, that so many of you have purchased and are using every day. It means so much and I wanted to do something special. I don't really do sales on the website outside of like Black Friday, which is obviously once a year. Um, so I'm going to make the entire website 50% off. If there was anything that you've been wanting to put off like picking up until there was a sale, maybe you were waiting for Black Friday, this would be a pretty good opportunity to do that. So just wanted to do something to say thank you to everyone. So that is it for today's video. Thank you again for watching. And if you're not already subscribed, 
be sure to do that now. I'll catch you in the next video.